So you've gotten into school? Let's go! Your life is set in motion. You're about to be a doctor. I am so excited for you. Undoubtedly, as you start on this new chapter, you probably have like a hundred questions on what to do next. Grad school is uncharted territory, a blend of emotions, challenges, and opportunities. Whether you're in medical school, dental school, pharmacy school, PT school, it all begins with your first semester. A crucial time where setting the right tone and establishing good habits can have a profound impact on your future as a doctor. During my own dental school journey, I encountered numerous obstacles and had to uncover various tips and tricks along the way. Now, I'm here, creating this video to share my experiences and help you navigate your first semester in your chosen health profession school. Rest assured, I've walked in your shoes facing the same challenges and anxieties. Yet, I emerged from the journey intact and successful equipped with the knowledge and insights necessary to survive in an environment like that. Let's get right into it. Tip number one, master the art of organization. Organizational skills are an absolute game changer in your journey of becoming a doctor. What made a massive impact on my academic potential was putting every single exam, quiz, and assignment in my calendar on my phone on the very first day. I made reviewing this calendar a daily habit. And by doing so, I was never caught off guard. And I always had a clear picture of just how many days it was until the next exam or assignment deadline. And this enabled me to proactively plan my social life around my academic commitments. When you receive your syllabi, treat that like a little treasure map to success. Take time to read through these things carefully. Remember, each class may have its own unique grading standards and understanding them early on is essential. While the initial weeks may appear relaxed, by week eight, it will come to you like you're trying to take a sip of water out of a fire hydrant. I cannot stress this enough. Please don't fall behind. The schooling you're about to undergo will be intense and there's no built-in catch-up time. Falling behind is not an option in the intense world of health professional school. People around you are very intelligent and very hardworking. Playing catch-up after doing bad in the beginning few weeks makes it really tough to get a really high GPA at the end of the semester. Also, don't underestimate the significance of those quizzes and assignments that slowly chip away at your final grade. Hopefully, we're all striving for excellence. So in school, there's very little room for error. I learned pretty quickly in school how missing just one online quiz brought my final grade from a 93 to a 92, which dropped my rank since an A at NYU is a 92.5 and a 90 is a f A minus. <clears throat> but these small setbacks prevent you from fully flexing that academic muscle I know you possess. As with your future preparations, these fine margins matter, especially when competing with the academic elites in your respective schools. Trust me when I say that being organized is more than half the battle, so embrace organization as an absolutely essential skill in your arsenal. Tip number two, forge lifelong connections. Building connections with your fellow classmates, both upperclassmen and underclassmen, is an asset that should never be underestimated. Don't miss out on the power that these personal relationships hold. Make it your mission to befriend everyone you come across because you never know who may become your lifelong bestie. It could be an upperclassman who's already conquered the very course you're about to take, or a friend in a study group who's got the holy grail of resources for acing exams. Trust me. We live in a world where it's not what you know, it's who you know. Please do yourself a favor and seek out an upperclassman who's absolutely kicking ass in school. I had upperclassmen friends who saved me by teaching me drilling tips the night before my lab practicals. They were able to offer a trained eye for mistakes I was constantly making that needed to be corrected before test day. And make no mistake about it, these relationships and friendships you will create during school will help you during your toughest moments. Surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals who are as driven and dedicated to their craft as you are will have an immense impact on your own personal growth. Allow me to introduce you to the concept of the five chimp theory, a concept mentioned by one of my idols, Neville Ravikant, in the book, Tools of Titans. In zoology, it has been observed that by examining the five chimps with whom an individual monkey spends the most time with, you can accurately predict their mood and behavior. Kind of cool, right? But this principle extends to humans as well. Your behavior, mindset, and habits 
are significantly influenced by the company you keep. So if we truly desire personal growth, we must be mindful of our chosen companions. And I ain't gonna lie to you guys, even in grad school, you'll encounter individuals with toxic habits, so it's essential to distance yourself from them if their values don't align with yours. Instead, strive to surround yourself with individuals who possess the same life force and those who radiate positivity and share similar life goals. Together, you will push each other relentlessly towards success, regardless of the level of adversity you guys face. Tip number three. Now, if you aspire to specialize, it's crucial to keep your grades as high as they can be. So achieving the academic standing you desire requires unwavering dedication and hard work. During your first two years, your primary focus should be on absorbing as much knowledge as humanly possible. Remember, these foundational years lay the groundwork for your future, especially if you plan to apply to postgraduate programs. To reach your academic goals, you must discover what works best for you. But if you've consistently achieved remarkable grades throughout your academic journey, you've likely already found your winning formula. However, early on, it's essential to develop a personalized system that caters to your own unique learning style. Determine the optimal number of days in advance to begin studying, the number of review passes you have to do to get an A, and allocate enough time for hands-on practice in the bench lab after class. And while we're on the topic of attending classes, I just wanted to air this out. Does sitting through didactic lectures actually work for you? Let me know in the comments below. I'm truly curious to know if people find real benefit to attending in-person lecture these days. For me, it was far more efficient to skip class watch the lecture comfortably at home, in my underwear, at 1.5 times speed, with the ability to rewind the key parts, and learn at my own pace. So I'm going on record to say that in 2024, I believe attending lecture is an absolute waste of time if it's being recorded online. I know, I know. But, but school is so expensive! And I'm wasting my money by not going to class. Eh, not really. I looked at it as a way that I was simply maximizing my ability to learn. I skipped every single non-clinical class in school possible. I locked myself in in my cozy room and I just studied all day. I would have watched all the material from last year's exam online before my classmates were even able to attend the third class in person. This gave me ample time to run through the material three times, which is what I personally needed to do to know I can get an A on any exam. And plus, you'll see just how fast people stop going to class after the first two months of school. One study method that worked well for me was the Pomodoro Technique. It's a time management method that involves breaking your work into intervals, typically 25 minutes long, separated by a short break. By using this technique, I was really able to enhance my focus and productivity while studying in school. With structured study periods and regular breaks, I was able to optimize learning and prevent burnout. Trust me when I tell you, this technique is an absolute game changer. Additionally, make use of recorded lectures and online resources like YouTube to support your learning. The material we learn in dental school is really not that hard. It's just that there's so much material to cover and you have to study for multiple exams at the same time. Now let's address those of you who may not have an immediate desire to specialize. In that case, your goal should be to find the most efficient way to pass your courses and maximize your free time. Remember, not a single patient will ever inquire about your grades or class rank. Yeah, you may run into a few gunners in your class, but let them do their own thing while you focus on your own path. But overall, my advice is to still try hard because you may never know if you fall in love with a specialty later on in life. Tip number four, prioritizing self-care. While academics are important, don't forget to have fun and make time for yourself. Striking a balance between work and relaxation is essential for your overall well-being. Dental school is a unique environment that can be both high stress and incredibly enjoyable if you approach it with the right mindset. Embrace the experience, keep pushing forward, and make the most of every opportunity to relax, indulge in your hobbies, and simply just spend quality time with the friends you care about the most. Contrary to popular belief, dental school is not as daunting as it may seem, especially if you're not aiming to specialize. Take every piece of advice with a grain of salt and never let negativity bring you down. Yes, you'll be busy, but trust me, you'll adapt and adjust. You got this. It's absolutely normal to feel uncertain about how to study, manage your time, balance various responsibilities, and take care of your personal life. Dental school presents its own unique challenges beyond the academic coursework. 
Trust me when I say that you will find your way through it all. Embrace the process, be patient with yourself, and allow yourself to learn and forgive even when you make mistakes or don't get the grades you wanted. And if you're currently going through your first year and you think it's bad, be grateful you haven't hit year two yet. Oh my God, if you know, you know. That was absolutely the worst year of my life. <laughs> Holy crap. However, I'd like to say congratulations on embarking on this incredible journey. I sincerely wish you all the success in your first semester and beyond. Stay tuned for more valuable advice on my channel. Thank you all for watching and always remember to keep smiling both inside and outside those dental school walls. Dr. Brana here signing off.